ICOM's brand new dual band HT analog only, the ICT10. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Special thanks to Gigaparts for sending me this radio. They sent it over and they said, hey, we've got one. Do you want to review it? I said yes, and then I have to send it back to them. So I'm not going to keep this radio, although I am thinking about doing a, a giveaway that will include this radio in the near future. So be sure to watch the channel for that. But this is ICOM's latest offering of HT radio. It's a dual band VHF UHF transceiver. This is what the box looks like here. I don't really want to do a full unboxing. Let me know. Okay, so ICOM paperwork. Thank goodness there's not Yezu paperwork in there. That would be weird. So there's the thing. comes with, okay, is that a desk charger? I bet that's not a desk charger. Well, wait a minute. What is this? That is, okay, we're going to do an unboxing. <laughs> okay, that's just a regular wall charger like the ID52 has is what that is. There it is right there. Focus, focus, battery. Uh, it does come with a charging cradle. Look at that. It comes with a charging cradle. What a fantastic idea that they had to actually put a charging cradle in an expensive HT. So, and there's the there's the antenna. This, okay, let's get this out of the way. This on here. Okay, so there's an SMA ma uh, female connector on the radio itself. SMA male connector is what the antenna has. Okay, so here's it right next to the ID52. This is ICOM's. These are these are the only two HTs that ICOM offers right now at all. Okay, so power that one on by turning the knob on. Power this one on by the battery on the side. You see, they're about the same size. Well, this way they're the same size. This one's obviously wider. Um, it, this one's got a bigger battery on it. So it's a little bit deeper with the, of course, this didn't have, I didn't put the belt clip on it yet. So, and the antennas, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if both antenna, those antennas are the exact same model of antenna. It just says ICOM on them. I stand corrected. This one does say FA S270C right there. You can't see it in the camera, but it's, it's stamped in there. So let's see if this one says, uh, same thing. FA S270C, right there. So there you go. Okay, so same exact antenna, dual band antenna, SMA male on the antenna itself. I carry this radio with me pretty much everywhere I go in a go box. I really like that radio. But for the cost, you know, I should like it for crying out loud. Okay, now, microphone is right there. Set, band, high, medium, and low. Uh, virtual, uh, uh, shoot. VFO and memory channel there, and then there's gray text on the these buttons, which is lock, mode, scan, and S.MW. That's so that's memory write. Okay, so those are probably long presses. Long pressing that locks the screen. So there's there's a number, there's a there's a symbol at the top left here that I can't really see, and I thought it was the men, menu number, but it's not changing as I turn this knob, so I don't know what it is. Um, which is okay. Or, or it's fine, whatever. Let's zoom in on that a bit. Okay, so now if we go all the way over, so what you do is you set one and then it takes you through all of the menus. So it's just making me go through all of this stuff after I set the PL tone. All right, this menu is is strange and I, I don't I don't like it. I don't like this menu. It's um takes a little bit of getting used to. Of course I could read the manual. So what I did was I, I went through and I set it to, I had, I accidentally turned PTT off. And so that was my fault because it's kind of hard. I can't see the menu very well just because it's it's really small. And there's a, there's a setting in there to turn the backlight on, to turn it off or turn it on auto. And it stays on for a few seconds or something like that. I haven't seen yet a place to adjust, adjust the brightness of the backlight. So it's not very bright. Uh, there might be a place to adjust it in there. I, w I will look in the manual and see if that's it, but I just kind of wanted to give a preliminary look first before we went that far. So it's got two buttons on the top. Obviously, this is your channel indicator and your volume. And then it's got these two buttons on the side here. This is the PTT right here and these two buttons beneath the PTT. 
That one opens up the squelch if you hold it down. This one, this one ch changes your, it, it's your megahertz is flashing. So you can change your megahertz real quick with that quick button there. Presumably you can program these two side buttons in the software. I do not have the software nor the programming cable for this radio. Okay, this right here is your, these are screwed down pieces, and this is for your external microphone and speaker. Speaker's here, microphone is there, but you'd have to take these screws out. I don't want to do that because I don't have these, I don't want to do that because I don't have these, um, I don't have an external mic for it anyway. The belt clip, which it does come with, attaches to the battery, so I always like it when your belt clip attaches to your battery right here. We can look at that real quick. The battery itself is a BP280, which is a 2400 milliamp hour battery at 72, uh, 7.2 volts. Here's your FCC cert certification. Serial number, made in Japan, of course. All that kind of good stuff back there. Audio 12345, KC5 HWB testing, audio 123. This video is sponsored by Mezzi and Palomi Coax. Mezzi and Palomi, or M&P Coax out of Italy, makes some of the best coax and best feed line available to the amateur radio community today from their smallest size around five millimeters to their largest size around 13 millimeters and beyond they offer something for everyone in every activity of amateur radio direct berry coax for your home shack and high temperature coax for those types of environments is also available from their catalog their evo or evolution pl259 connectors are some of the best i have ever seen in this industry if you want some of the greatest coax and feed line made for the amateur radio community today, check out the link in the description below to save a 5% discount. And thank you, Mezzi and Plomi, for supporting this channel. All right, looking in the manual, there is nothing in the index here. And I thumbed through this whole thing for about how to set the backlight. In fact, it doesn't even really list anything about turning the backlight off and on. But it is in the menu to do that. So unless they're calling it something else besides light, which doesn't exist here, or backlight, nothing under the Bs. There's nothing that is set in there. So, it, so the screen is not very bright, in my opinion. I don't really like that. It's hard to see. And I've got some pretty good lights in the shack here. This is how I light all my videos. That's what they call it in the menu is light. And you can turn it on, you can turn it off, or you can turn it to auto, which times out after like five seconds I think it is a few seconds whatever it is so there's nothing in this in this manual about the light or the backlight adjusting squelch level monitor function setting a frequency setting the operating band that's good there move that over operating mode FM radio does receive FM broadcast radio setting a frequency it goes down to a five step megahertz or yeah, 5.0 kilohertz step, not 2.5 and not 8.33. So it'll go to 5, 10, 12 and a half, 15, 20, and 25. Actually, it'll go up to 200, it says. So it does not do 2.5 kilohertz steps, which, okay, that's fine. Most of the time in analog, you don't need that. Using the home channel tells you how to do that. Light right here. Light, backlight, star two. These items are settable even while using the FM radio. Okay, so it has, these are the set mode items. So when you go, you click on set, it takes you through all of these. So like when I, I click on set and the first thing that came up was tone and I set my CTCSS tone. And then I clicked set again to what I presume would be exit out of the menu, but it brings you down to our tone. And then you hit set again, it goes down to C tone. And then code, DTC, uh, DTCS, duplex, offset, duplex, reverse. Tuning step, that's the one that I set to 5 kilohertz a minute ago. Priority scan, tone scan, so it'll scan for CTCSS tones. If you're listening to a repeater and you don't know what tone the repeater is set to, it'll scan for that. That's pretty cool. Um, that, that's a pretty common feature with newer radios. Pause timer, program, skip scan, backlight, but there's nothing else in, in this manual for the backlight. So there's no there's no way to adjust the bright. That's what I was looking in the manual for. Is there a way to adjust the brightness in the backlight? And not that I've found. PTT lock. I had turned that on by mistake. That's why I couldn't get it to key up a minute ago. Weather alert. Mic gang. Vox. A bunch of Vox stuff. DTMS transmission. Right there. 
DTMF memory. So you can set you can set your all star node numbers. If you want to set star three and then four three one three six, which is my all star node, you can put that in DTMF memory, key down the PTT and hit that, and it'll automatically dial that up for you. Operating mode individually settable for every band and memory channel. Beep level timeout timer auto repeater auto power off so you can set it to power itself off if you just leave it, leave it sitting on the desk for too long that'll be good for frank he's always leave, letting his radio die emotional damage lockout squelch delay dtmf speed display mode display mode i might look at that power save dial speed mic simple mode voltage indication audio low power tone burst earphone antenna and monitor all right so that's a little bit strange the manual does not indicate how to set tone squelts on transmit only it seems like if it's got an option for tsql and tsql tsql dash r and it seems like the receive or like maybe it's tone squelch reverse or tone squelch receive would mean that you set it for receive and not transmit but that's not what it means and it and the manual there's not there's nothing about tone squelch in the manual so what you do is you go into the menu so you've got tone and your options are off tone, which I don't know what tone means, okay, but it has priority beep or P beep, T -squel T -S -Q -L and T -S -Q -L R, and then it has your DTCSS tones. So on my All Star node, I have a tone setup of 192.8. If I key if I put it on this mode, TSQL and key the All-Star node, I can see the S meter on the radio coming back to me, but I cannot hear the tones coming from the All-Star node, the courtesy tone coming from the All-Star node. If I put it on TSQL R, I can hear the tones coming from the courtesy tone coming from the All-Star node. There you go. KC5H WB testing. Okay, so now I can hear it. So it, it took it a little bit to figure that out. And I just, I figured that out just by doing it. Because I looked in the manual. And there's nothing in the index about CTCSS or tone squelch or anything like that at all. So, yeah, this manual doesn't seem very, it's not up to ICOM's normal standards. I'm going to put it that way. I'm going to say it's not up to ICOM's normal standards because ICOM manuals are great. This one right here is just kind of like a very, I mean, it tells you how to put the battery on and put the antenna on and plug it in and how to save a memory. It does tell you how to save a memory channel, but I don't know. Okay, so let's go. Um, Node four, okay. three, one, three, six, connect. Four, six, four, three, seven. <clears throat> okay. KC5H, WB testing, a new radio. Looking for a radio check? So the programming on this radio takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not like a standard... It's not. It's nothing like the ID52. Of course, it's not going to be like a Baofeng. I've I'm kind of gotten so used to these Baofeng menus that that's kind of what I expect now. The Yezu menus are totally different. Uh, the icon, the ID52 menu is totally different, but this one's nothing like an ID52 menu, so it takes some getting used to. It's not, it's not undoable. It's just, you know, just takes some getting used to. So something like what, uh, what you expect from like a new radio. Hg5 NBC sounds good, Jason. <clears throat> hey Kelly, thanks a lot, man. I'm uh, testing out this new uh, HT from Icon, the ICT10. I don't know if he dropped out or if my node did. Uh, this is a dual band analog only HT. Okay, great. That's what I was testing. I appreciate you being out there, man. Uh, I'll chat at you in a bit. 73 KC5 HWB. So there you go. Okay. So programming's a little weird. The screen is small, and it's not very bright. 
it's going to be an ICOM quality radio, so it's going to have excellent audio. It's going to have an excellent receiver. It's going to have excellent front end. Um, you know, the Spectrum Analyzer is probably going to look really good on it. It's going to have ex excellent front end rejection uh, of, of RFI and whatnot, you know, like you would expect from ICOM. But I don't know. It's a little bit, a little bit hard to program and, uh, and it's hard to see just because of the small screen and it's not very bright. So, yeah, okay. I'm glad. Once again, thank you to Gigaparts. Check the link in the description below if this is a radio that interests you. I don't think you're going to go wrong with it. I think that if you get it and once you get used to it and start using it, I think it's going to be a great radio. I just, I don't know if it would be on my list of, of radios to keep. So, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Let me know if you have one of these, what you think about it. Put a comment in the description below. Check the links in the description below. 73.